about 100 people living in Kibbutz Beri who tried to took shelter uh, in this community dentist uh, center uh, were also literally dragged out of the center when Hamas terrorists took control of the area. Uh, they were killed and uh, this is the kind of destruction that uh, Hamas terrorists inflicted upon this uh, center. Uh, you could see entire uh, place was kind of blown into pieces. Uh, behind me you could also see uh, bullet marks on the wall. So there was indiscriminate firing and uh, casualties that Hamas didn't care. In fact, they wanted more people to die to inflict major uh, terror in the area. We had a chance to visit the site of atrocities that were committed on 7th of October. Uh, I'm standing in Kibbutz Beri, which is not very far, about uh, one and a half and two kilometers from Gaza Strip, from where the, uh, the hundreds of Hamas terrorists invaded Israeli territories and their settlement areas, killing and targeting innocent people, kids, women, elderly, uh, and destroying all the infrastructure that they could lay their hands on. Before, the security forces or the personnel from the Israeli side could take control of the situation, a major carnage and the damage uh, was already done. Uh, about 100 people were killed, about 70 of uh, you know, terrorists were also tackled, but it took hours before Israeli settlement uh, could, take, uh, take, uh, could be undertook by uh, the Israeli forces. Uh, right now also, the area continues to get maximum number of rockets fired from the Hamas locations. Even now, when we were covering this uh, report, uh, we could see sirens going off and several of the rockets that were fired from the Hamas locations from across the strip, that is from Gaza, uh, were tackled by Iron Dome rockets, that is uh, the protective layer uh, for the Israeli side uh, and uh, those rockets were tackled in the sky. We will show you those pictures also uh, that we captured on our camera. These are the vehicles and uh, bikes uh, which uh, Hamas terrorists uh, were riding when they intruded in this uh, settlement of uh, Kibbutz Beiri which is not far from Gaza about uh, two kilometers and here uh, was the scene that unfolded in the most bizarre way uh, I know dozens of people were killed and uh, after that uh, security forces took control of, uh, control of the situation but uh, for 10 12 hours it was the total rampage that was going on. We are now in Kibbutz Beri and the trail of destruction uh, that started on 7th of October. You could see behind me these burnt houses and shops. Uh, the entire settlement was under the attack of uh, Hamas terrorists and for hours uh, there was no security personnel who could uh, kind of take control of the situation and the entire stretch was pretty much uh, under the rampage, under the mayhem and, uh, of uh, Hamas uh, terrorists and uh, several uh, Dozens of people were killed. There were some really executed. Uh, shops burnt, vehicles burnt, and uh, you know the kind of atrocities that these Hamas uh, terrorists had, uh, you know, inflicted upon the people of this small settlement uh, was unimaginable. And people are still trying to grapple up uh, with the kind of atrocities, with the kind of disgusting, uh, you know, crime of humanity they had to face on the day of 7th of October. I'm joined by IDF spokesperson. Uh, sir, name? Lieutenant Colonel Amnon Scheffler. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Scheffler, uh, I know it, 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 we have seen from our eyes, it, it has been very 
tragically described uh, situation. Uh, if you could just give us some detail how it unfolded, what all uh, was the number of you know casualties that the Israeli side had to suffer. On October 7th morning, Hamas launched this most horrific attack. They had one goal in mind, which is to kill and abduct as many people as they could. Mm -hmm. And you can see here from these houses that mm -hmm. they entered, tied mothers and children and fathers and elderly, their hands behind their back and killed them, mm -hmm. burned their houses with them inside and kidnapped to the Gaza Strip. Sadly, we have over 1,300 Israelis that have been murdered. Mm -hmm. We have over 4,000 that are still being treated, mm -hmm. some in critical condition, mm -hmm. and we have 199 civilians and soldiers that are now being held in Gaza as hostages by this horrific organization. Uh, how many people, we are in the Kibbutz Beri, this is a small settlement, how many people uh, died here and how many, uh, you know, neutralize uh, the terrorists, how many terrorists were neutralized here? Over 10% of this community was murdered. Mm -hmm. That is more than 100 percent, 100 people that have been murdered here. Mm -hmm. the, the number of terrorists uh, that you encountered or engaged or just was able to, you know, kill or... We encountered hundreds mm -hmm. of terrorists. We have killed over 1,000 terrorists here inside Israel and many more that are on the border. And we will continue to fight and mm -hmm. stop this terrorist organization. That is what we are now building our army to. We have drafted over 350 uh, reservists that are joining the regular military mm -hmm. that are ready to act in any way that the political Ashland will guide us to do. Okay. Lieutenant Colonel, uh, several of the people or the leaders around the world are also criticizing Israel for the, uh, you know, inflicting civilian casualties on the Gaza side as part of his counter-offensive. Uh, you know, the, the, there are countries like especially China has said that uh, the counter-offensive, uh, the Chinese foreign minister has said that uh, the counter-offensive looks like a collective punishment for the Palestinian people. Uh, how would you describe it? We stand m proudly by our morals and our values mm -hmm. of sanctity of life being the most important life thing. And we act according to that in ways that can almost not be seen around the world, mm -hmm. trying to minimize any kind of civilian damage and harm. And that is why we have guided the people of Gaza to go south, down south of the Wadi of Gaza in order for them to be safe. Mm -hmm. Because Hamas deliberately puts them in harm's way. Mm -hmm. This is what Hamas wants. Mm -hmm. They want as many Palestinians to be killed because they sickly think that they gain from that. Mm -hmm. Now, on the second thing you asked, the world has stood proudly mm -hmm. with Israel, mm -hmm. understanding these horrific behaviors and standing against them. And we're proud to see the friends that share our values stand together with us. Mm -hmm. These bulletproof vests still that uh, 
they had come fully prepared that they are going to encounter the security forces and uh, they are going to retaliate, they are going to protect themselves at the same time firing upon the security forces. These are the bullets and bullet marks because of the firing, uh, you know, the families living in here, kids, everybody ran uh, to some safety but did not, uh, you know, protect themselves and much of the population here uh, who tried to survive, who tried to run away was killed. This must have been some nicely built uh, home of some, some family but what is left now is burnt ashes and walls riddled with bullet marks and charred body parts that are still uh, somewhere around and uh, it's all destruction that is uh, left behind of what could have been a normal happy living family's house in Kibbutz Peri. Most of the area has been cleared by the security forces in the last seven to eight days. But still there are enough evidences that can tell the story of tragedy, the story of terror that unfolded on the morning of 7th of October in Kibbutz Berry. So the firing has been uh, sounded here. There are certain rockets that are being fired here. There are still rockets being fired continuously. To tackle the upcoming rockets from the Hamas side, I believe. These lines in the sky are the trails of Iron Dome rocket that engaged with the upcoming assault or rocket from the Hamas side and they were destroyed in the sky. <laughs> 